we cover a lot of very prolific vehicles in this series, but there are a few tanks as popular as the Mouse. The Mouse, conceptualized by Germany during the Second World War, is what many consider to be the apotheosis of heavy tanks. More akin to a mobile bunker than an actual tank, it's amazing that the mouse was ever constructed, let alone functional. Though I don't think many AFE enthusiasts nowadays would give it high praise, there are some groups that believe the mouse would have been a game changer, nigh on invincible against allied weapons. I think this assessment ignores the reality of the situation, so let's take a look at the mouse's development. We'll be able to see exactly why it failed, and why it probably wouldn't have had a major impact on the war at all. Contrary to popular belief, development of the mouse was not spurred by the Mustache Man. There were rumors that the Russians were planning to build super heavy tanks, so German armored officers wanted a counter. Studies for tanks ranging from 110 to 170 tons were undertaken by Krupp. They were originally called Mammoth, but this was deemed to be a little too on the nose, so they were renamed to Mouse. This wasn't really a sarcastic joke, more so an attempt at security. In 1942, the Mustache Man ordered that a 100-ton vehicle should be immediately designed by Porsche, so it also took the name Mouse. He firmly believed that firepower and protection should take precedence over speed, so any increase in weight was acceptable, but any decrease was not. Krupp and Porsche once again went head-to-head, -head, with Porsche's design winning out in the end. More specifically, Porsche was in charge of the design process, while Krupp would actually produce the vehicles. Originally, a 15cm gun was specified, but this was eventually swapped for a 12.8cm gun. A coaxial 75mm gun would be mounted as well. Due to ever-increasing demands, the weight of Porsche's design had ballooned to nearly 170 tons. Raw armor thickness was to be 20cm on the front, 18 on the upper sides, 10 on the lower sides, and 18 on the rear. As you can probably imagine, creating such a large and impressive machine requires a lot of innovation. Power would be provided by the DB603 engine, which was supposed to deliver 1500 horsepower, but in practice, that number was closer to 1080. Just as on Porsche's Tiger design, the engine was connected to two electric motors. These would essentially act as a transmission. This allowed for pretty excellent agility, even for very large vehicles. But the system had been troublesome in the past. This type of technology had been proven before, but only on commercial vehicles like buses. In military vehicles, their performance was far less stellar. The Ferdinand Tank Destroyer, named after Porsche himself, also used this system, and it did not do well at all. Sure, the Ferdinand was fairly agile given its size, but the propulsion system had excessive wear and overheating issues. Regardless, if they wanted some semblance of agility, there was basically no alternative, so it was chosen anyway. In order to distribute the mouse's immense weight, it would need incredibly wide tracks. The tracks were over a meter wide, providing a ground pressure of around 20 psi. This is quite high, with ground pressures around 13 psi generally being deemed unacceptable. There was a lot of back and forth between the various contractors, as you would expect. But during the mouse's development, much about its design would change. For example, it was supposed to have a flamethrower system. Implementing it proved extremely difficult, and its configuration changed often. Eventually, it was dropped completely. The armor on the rear was shaved down. Instead of the original 18 centimeters, it would now be 15. A new suspension system was designed, as the original was inadequate. Despite an initial production order for 141 mouse tanks, Guderian ordered that only 5 should be made, just for testing and evaluation. If the trials were successful, he would approve the rest. In July 1943, a bombing raid effectively halted mouse production. A number of holes and turrets had been made already, but producing more would take ages. With this in mind, production was cancelled soon after. It would later be reactivated, but only one fully functional mouse was ever made. The results gathered from testing were mixed. It now weighed 188 tons. Initially, it was said the mouse was fairly agile, but later tests claimed it was difficult to turn. The valves on the engine had become damaged after operation. Driver visibility was notably poor. When the tracks on the mouse broke, it took 8 hours for the crew to replace them. And due to its immense size, it was basically impossible to repair the power pack in the field. There were some considerable ergonomic and mechanical issues with the turret as well, so it was decided that the turret should be redesigned. A new program was also created to compete with the mouse, known as the E100. While it wasn't really new, the design goes back to 1942, but it wasn't investigated in earnest until later. It was supposed to be lighter and easier to produce, though in my opinion, it was probably just adding more waste to an already wasteful program. In summary, the mouse did have mechanical trouble, but I don't think it was especially egregious, at least for a heavy tank. In general though, I do think that super heavy tanks are flawed as a concept. I can't think of one that saw actual use, besides maybe the Char 2C. Their utility is extremely limited, but they take considerable resources to develop and produce. Had the mouse actually been used in combat, I think it wouldn't have fared better than any other German tank. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.